gotta really work about none. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. Ain't gotta really work about none. Yeah, we up in the rain. Yo, hello, it's Reva here, and in today's video I will be showing you guys how to make the glitch particle text you saw in the beginning. And if you guys want to support me, I have a website where you can buy some editing packs, so feel free to check that out. But yeah, let's get right into this. So the first thing we're going to do is to make a text layer, so we can name our text here. So I'm just going to uh, use the type tool here, and then press here and the, these are the text settings I will be using. When you're done with the text and you've name, named it and everything, you can hide the text layer and then move on to make a solid layer. I've already made it, but uh, yeah. And here we're going to add element 3D to it. And what you're going to do is to open up custom layers, custom text and masks, and then choose text here or whatever your text says. And then you're going to open up scene setup here. And here you're going to click on extrude and then increase the bevel size to 10. And then we're going to go over to presets, physical and then choose chrome as our reflection here. When you have done this, you can press OK. And now we're going to fix the rotation of this text. So you're going to open up group 1, particle look and increase the particle size to 19.3. Open up particle rotation and I'm going to change it to minus 13 here and 10 on the Y rotation and I think this looks good so now I'm going to add some shadows to this so I'm going to open up render settings ambient inclusion enable AO and then drag up the intensity to 50 just like that and now we're going to make a adjustment layer so you're going to press ctrl alt Y and then you're going to add an effect called CC Ball Action. And here I'm going to rotate this 123 degrees. And on the twist property, I'm going to change it to brightness. And here I will be rotating it a full 360 degrees. And then we're going to drag down the grid spacing to zero. So you get something like this. And now it's really starting to, starting to look a little bit more interesting. And uh, then, and now we are going to keyframe the ball size. <laughs> so we're going to press the clock here at five seconds in the composition and then go uh, to the beginning and then change it to zero. So it looks something like this now. And uh, that should be good for the ball action effect. And now we're going to make a camera. So we're going to right click here, press new, and then camera. Use the default settings here. And I'm going to keyframe the position here. So you're going to open up transform. And you can go to where you can see the text. You can mess around a lot with this. If you change the position, you will get a fully unique look whenever you try to change the position. But the settings I will be using is 1495 and then 246.6. And on the set rotation, it's going to be 2444.3. Something like that, looks good. And now I'm going to be keyframing this. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and press the clock here on the position. And then go to five seconds. And here I'm going to change back to the normal default settings. So you can see 960 there and then 540. As it says above, minus 2666.7. Boom. So now I get the default look back. So now it's almost kind of going through the whole text here which I think looks pretty, pretty clean. And now, to not make it so stiff here in the ending and uh, still and boring, I want a keyframe from the middle uh, of the animation, uh, which is two and a half seconds. I'm going to open up the uh, 3D text layer. And then here, I'm going to keyframe the scale at 100 at two and a half seconds, and then go to six seconds, and then put the scale to 90 instead. Enable motion blur. Almost forgot to change the graph here in the camera position. So you're going to select both of the keyframes here, press F9 and open up the graph editor. And here we're going to drag this one up to around here and the other one as well to around there somewhere. Drag this one a little bit more there and this one a little bit more there. And you will get something like this now. 
And now we obviously want to make this a little bit more like colorful. So I'm going to press Ctrl Alt Y again to make a new adjustment layer. And here I'm going to be adding Colorama. And here you can open up Output Cycle. And uh, you can choose between uh, presets here. And we are going to be choosing Fire and Smoke. And you will get this kind of look here. Pretty, pretty cool. Rename it to Color or something. Boom. And then we're going to pre-comp all of the layers here. So you're going to select all of them, right-click, pre-comp, name it text, boom. Then make a new adjustment layer by pressing Ctrl on Y. And here we're going to add the glow. So I'm going to be adding deep glow here. And these are the settings I will be using. A radius at 649, and exposure to 2.34. Smooth blending, add it, and then that should be good. The last effect I like to add is a uh, motion blur to this. So I'm going to add RSMB. And here I will be changing the blur to 0.3 and the uh, sensitivity to 50. And these settings all depends on how high or low frame rate you have. The lower you have, the lower you need to have these settings here. And the higher FPS you have, the higher blur amount and everything you need to have here. So yeah, this is how you made the glitch particle text. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please like and uh, subscribe. And uh, if you have any new ideas on tutorials I can make, please comment that down below or DM me on my socials. And check out my website if you would like to support me. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys soon. Take care and have a nice day.